Hello, and welcome to Fusion Writing, where building character meets creating structure. And we're on our map day. And that means we're on the day where we show you the layout of the land so that you can navigate through the material that we are offering you to help you with your writing. So I'm not going to take up any of Victoria's time. I'm going to turn it right over to her so she can tell us what she has to share today. Hello, writers. Welcome back to the map day. Okay, <clears throat> as I said in the compass, often we find ourselves either between big projects, maybe you've just finished something big and you've put it to bed and you're just kind of taking a little break. Or what if you finished a project and you've set it aside because you need to let it marinate before you go back in for that big editorial pass? Or maybe you don't know what you should be working on. Maybe you're just kind of at loose ends, you have a few ideas, but you're not really sure what you want to do. And you're just in that discovery phase where you're just playing around with some thoughts and ideas. I'm talking to you because here's the thing. Something that I learned pretty early on in my writing career is that short pieces allow you to work that writer's muscle without the big problems that you have to solve when you're working on, say, the plot for an entire novel or the outline for an entire dissertation or even a big paper. So I want to introduce you to two short forms that I personally really like using when my, my writer's mind just wants to doodle. That's what I think of it as. So in my book that's upcoming, Zettelkasten for Fiction Writers, I include an entire section just on what is called microfiction. Now that's a technical term. The term that I like to use for this kind of writing is slice of life, because in a short piece, you don't have all of the space and the time that you have to develop out, say, eight plot points or even a three act structure. When you're working in a super small slice of life, all you have is that one emotion, that one scene, generally that one character, in order to render some kind of change in your reader. That's why readers read microfiction. They just want a little punch, a little slice of life, and then something about them is uplifted or they have something to think about and they go about their day. So let's look at these two forms. The first one is the shortest story form that I have found, and I've researched this like crazy. It's called the six word story. Guess what it is? It's a story in six words. Now, don't be fooled. This example of writing came about in the early 1900s. You have to remember, novel writing used to be the thing that was kind of lowbrow. It was like the thing that people did for fun. It wasn't real writing. Short fiction was actually considered the real academic writing. It's what was taken seriously. And around that time, there is a six word story that became very famous and passed around and it got misattributed to Ernest Hemingway. Now you have to buy my book and read the story to find out how that happened and what went on. But this is not written by Hemingway, but it's the best example I know. Listen up. For sale, baby shoes never worn. Think about that for a minute. Okay, what do you have in that little short six word story? You have an inciting incident, something is for sale. You have an implied main character and a point of view, which is the person selling the shoes. It's also an implied side character or some kind of conflict because of the baby. Was there a baby? Was there no baby? Did something happen to the baby? And there's your climax, never worn. It leaves your reader wondering, what happened? What are the details of this story? So you've captured all of the key elements of a great story in just six words. Now, my aside is, if Hemingway could have written this, he definitely would have, but we'll leave it as our example for a short, short piece. So that's my challenge to you. See if you can come up with an entire story that hits all of the key elements in just six words. If you can do it, Post it over Infusion Writing in lilypub.org, which is our writing group, because I would love to see what you guys come up with in the six word story challenge. The second one I'll give you quickly is 100 words. This is often called drabble fiction. It just is 100 words that contain the elements of a short story or a short idea. So if six words feels like holy moly, I can't distill it down to six, give yourself 100 words and see if you can hit those key story elements of some kind of inciting incident that makes your reader want to read it, that's your offering, some kind of action or thing that happens, 
and then land that reader with the character and leave them with something to think about or walk away with. That's my challenge to you for this week. Tackle the six word or the 100 word story and see if you can wrap something around an idea that your reader might want to read, all in service to working that writer's muscle so that you keep those juices flowing and keep developing your craft. With that, I will throw it back over to Kathleen because what she has to say dovetails nicely with this because in order to do these exercises, one must have good self-control and force yourself to do the work. So Kathleen, off to you. Okay, thank you so much, Victoria. I enjoyed that very much and I'm gonna take on those challenges. What fun. Well, I have today the subgroup of balance, which is the self-management group. Now, balance is always, as I said yesterday in our compass, it's the character trait group where you're looking for the middle ground. You don't wanna be too loose and you don't wanna be too tight. You're looking for the middle ground. And one of those character traits in the self-regulation group is the queen of all balanced traits. It's moderation. It's the poster child of the balanced traits. What is moderation? Moderation is choosing balance, duh, in all things. Having a balanced amount of work in your life, a balanced amount of rest, a balanced amount of recreation, and all things striving for that balance. You no wonder it's the poster child of the balance group. The next one that you need to consider in this group is one that's called orderliness. Now, orderliness is a sleeper. Yes, it means tidiness, but orderliness has an awful lot more going on. It's how do you, how does your character approach life in terms of having a sense of control, of order, of planning in their existence. Um, to what extent does he have his finger on the pulse? It's sort of like the uh, day planner of the character traits. How, what's happening, and is it all pretty much lined up? The third character trait in this group, and the last one, is called self-control. Well, didn't we talk about moderation? Isn't self-control the same as moderation? No, actually it's not. Self-control is how well you have a handle on yourself. If you make up your mind that you're going to get that balanced amount of rest, that moderation and rest, can you make yourself do that? To what extent can you make yourself turn off the computer when it's time to give your eyes a rest? To what extent can you back away from challenges and conversations and situations that will throw you out of whack and upset you? Do you have the willpower to step away when it's appropriate for you to do that? So all three of them have slightly different meanings. Now, what's rather interesting about this character trait group, it's almost never the big thing that your story hinges on in the sense of, yay, we've reached the climax. Guess what? The hero is now orderly. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I think there might be some accountants who would enjoy that story. I mean, I wouldn't rule it out. Any story can be written well enough to be entertaining, but it's not what you think of as being the high point of the story. But it can be the next to the most important thing because sometimes what's keeping your character from making that final push to really achieve victory in the story, to get to that final point of victory, is he might have to conquer one of these three. He might have to face the mess that's getting in his way of being able to see the avenue that he has to follow. He might need to get himself more balanced so that he can get the right focus on things and bring things into proper perspective. He might have to get himself under control so that he doesn't fly off in impulsive behaviors that are sidetracking him from his goals. So don't rule out this group as being very important, as being the hard to achieve, the thing that 
yay, it's achieved and now the victory can take place. So it can be a very, very important second feature in your story. And it can be a fantastic antagonist. So if you think about it, all you have to do is set up that your hero is easily distracted by something or someone and you've built that in and now comes the key moment in the story and here comes this thing or that person and oh, your reader's all concerned. Is he going to get scooped away? So it can have its drama as well. So let's not rule these character traits out and they're very important for helping to create a well-balanced character balance again, a well-rounded character that will seem alive and believable to your audience. So consider these as you do your writing. Now, what Victoria is giving you some writing challenges, and they mean posting in Lillipub. So don't forget to come on over to Lillipub and post your writing, and we will see you over there also for our fusion writing gatherings. Victoria, do you want to finish us up? Absolutely. As always, I love it how these things fit so nicely together. So something occurred to me as Kathleen was explaining how you can toggle and use the balance traits. What about this? What if you use that little distraction as a twist in your story? Let's say, for example, your protagonist is suffering from a terrible sense of disorderliness. They're disheveled. They can never find anything. They know the piece that they need. They can never lay their hands on it. And all of the other characters are working together to try and get this person in their lane, to get them orderly, to get them organized, pay attention. And at the critical moment, when everyone knows there is no way this person is going to come through, there's no way they're going to have that trait, bingo. They pull the map out of their pocket because someone told them to put it there, right? So you can easily solve problems and build in little character wins using this kind of a twist. That's a terrific way to employ the character traits as Kathleen lays them out. So I would highly encourage you to play with these traits in the context of how can I set up a story so that a character delivers to a reader the very thing that the traits say there's no way they can do this because you've used some kind of a twist in the traits? That's my second challenge. So you've got plenty of challenges for this week. Get your writing done and get on over to lilypub.org and post in Fusion Writing so that we can see you on Saturday. We start at noontime central and continue through 3 p.m. We workshop at 1 central. Come join us and let's talk about these great stories and let's talk about how we can use the character traits to drive those characters that readers are going to love. We will see you over there. See you there. Bye-bye.